I've been using my Cobra 3 Max for about six months now, and it's time for some basic maintenance. Printing this gigantic shelf, the stepper motors, they, it was wobbling a bit that didn't sound quite right. So we're gonna step through everything here that Anycubic recommends, and this is the Ace Pro that I got from the eBay video fixing up a Cobra 3, so I could have two of these. I haven't done any maintenance on this yet, and it's due. So we're gonna step through both of this today and get yours back to perfect working shape. But first, a word from our sponsor, PCBWay. If you need any custom PCBs, PCB assembly, 3D printing because your printer's out of commission, or CNC machining, and more, go to PCBWay, upload your files, and you can have your creation in a matter of days. Use my link in the description below for $5 off your first order. We're gonna start by turning off our printer, removing the build plate, and washing it with just soap and water. As you can see, we have some schmoo on here that we need to get off. Grab a lint-free rag, some water, light soap and water, and just gently scrub. You don't need a lot of soap. We're just getting the dust off. And once you're done, rinse it with some water and let it dry. Once it is dry, let's get it back on the print bed. I like to use some isopropyl alcohol and just gently wipe it down to get any remaining residue off of it. Once that's nice and clean, you shouldn't really have any more first layer issues. After a while, the grease can get schmooey, so we need to replace that. First, home your Z-axis. This will bring your print head all the way to the bottom. Now grab some extra grease you have and just glide it along the Z-axis screws. Then use your finger to rub it around, although it is optional because the rotation of the screw will spread it around itself. And make sure you do the other side as well. Once you're done greasing, move the extruder to the top and then make sure you add another layer if needed. Once you've done that, go ahead and home your Z-axis again. It'll bring it all the way to the bottom. Just check to make sure that it's fairly slick and wipe off any extra grease you may have. And that's it for the Z-axis screws. Next, we're gonna grease the guide rails to get any dust off. Make sure you just blow it first. And then using the same grease, just wipe it along each metal rail. Uh, there are four on the bottom and two on the extruder rail. You will have to move things around, but that's okay. You're also spreading it on the areas you've already applied grease. But when you move it, make sure you apply grease to the new areas that you haven't touched yet. Once again, home all your axes. Move if the extruder if you need to. For example, I'm moving it all the way to the right and then I'll press the home button again. You just want it to go over all the rails that you just greased. If any of your axes are extra wobbly like my bed here, you're gonna to have to adjust what's called an eccentric nut. So seen here, it's, an, it's a nut with an offset hole in the middle that you can adjust the tightness or looteness of. The bed has four on each roller underneath seen here. And then there's also one on the bottom of the extruder and on the inside of each vertical rail that you'll need to adjust and make sure it's tight, but not so tight, your stepper motor can't actually move what it needs to. So make sure it's snug, give it a wiggle, and we can move on. It's recommended you check that the tie rods are secure. So what I'm gonna do, this table is in level, so I'm just gonna get an idea of how bad or good it is before we start. With that known, we're gonna start adjusting the tie rods just like any other vehicle. You loosen the nuts on each end, then you can twist the bar to either increase or decrease the length of this rod. 
The idea is when you're done, the bed and the top will be level and the sides will be perfectly vertical. This can change over time the more you print, so it's good to stay on top of it, especially if you have print issues. Next, we need to make sure our nozzle isn't clogged. So we're gonna change it to 250 degrees Celsius because that's higher than ABS and thus should melt anything in there. This is important because if there is a blob of ABS in there and you only print PLA, it'll never get hot enough to clear it. So we know it's hot enough because our current PLA starts to ooze out so we can get started. The bottom is just held on magnetically with a few tabs at the top. That's easy enough. We want to clear away any filament on the outside of the nozzle, which we're going to use with pliers because remember it's 250 degrees Celsius. There is a tab on the right side to quick release the nozzle. I actually recommend you remove the silicone sock first. I was a bit ahead of myself here, so it's going to wobble a bit. So once that sock's removed, then you should move that lever so we can remove the nozzle with some pliers as well. Now, the, when you bought it, the kit did come with a needle that you can run through the nozzle to get any leftover filament out. I had a little bit of green here, which I thought was clear, and it wasn't. So we did have plenty of filament to actually clean out. If you get an issue printing where it says broken filament detected, this is what you need to do. It needs to be hot, you need to use pliers, and you need to remove this nozzle and clear out that filament I just cleared out. I've run into this many times since I've had this printer. Once you're confident it's clear of everything, make sure you insert the nozzle through the heater, raise it through the block, you may need a few tools and three hands, but once it's up in there, lower that lever to enable the, or close the quick release. I'm gonna do one more cleaning just to be sure, but it should already be good enough. With it clear, I'll put the silicone sock back on. It's cooled off, you can just use your fingers, although pliers can be helpful. Then to put the cover, bottom cover back on, start with the tabs at the top and let the magnets finish at the bottom. Anycubic only recommends you dust off the motherboard if you have this on the floor, which to me is a little crazy, but there's plenty of times it might be on the floor, I guess. Anyway, there's a bunch of screws on the bottom of the machine to remove this plastic plate. And once you do, you can pull it away. Now the fan was glued onto the motherboard. So I just set this off to the side. Spray your compressed air all around. Mine was really clean because it's not on the floor and not around pets, but your mileage may vary. And that's really it. Once it's clean enough, go ahead and put the plate back on and screw everything in. Make sure you're not pinching any of these cables. The black and orange cables in the top left, I did have to move around a bit, so they stayed in that recessed area. Now we move on to the Ace Pro. Again, this is the one I got from eBay. I don't know how long it's been used, where my other one was brand new with a Cobra 3 Max. First, we're gonna look at the four PTFDE tubes on the bottom with the buffers. There's two screws on the back and two screws on the bottom or top in this view. With the screws removed, I did have to pry it away a bit, but eventually it does just lift off. We're gonna move on to the second one here because my first one was kind of a disaster. There are two screws holding the two plastic halves together. You will have to flip them over for this because on the other side is a small rail that fits in the plastic piece we removed. You can split them apart and remove the PTFE connector. And then I had to use a little pry tool in the back to pry two tabs away from the other housing and it came apart easily.
The spring underneath is clipped into the tube, so you don't have to worry about it springing somewhere never to be found again. However, you do want to make sure that there's no crimping, it looks like it's in good condition, and you can move it freely. When you do put it back together, the spring has to be pushed forward so the back of this plastic piece, closest to the front, does not have the spring in it. I hope this grainy picture kind of shows what I'm talking about. Next, you'll put on the top piece, snap it together, put your PTFE connection back in the front, and screw it back down. Make sure when you're done, it does move freely. If not, you probably pinched the spring and need to do this again. It's happened to me a few times on that first one. Repeat this for the three remaining buffers and it should be in good condition. Now to disassemble the ACE, there are four screws on the bottom, two are visible, and two are underneath the front rubber feet. Just get a pry tool underneath there, pry it up. You will lose some stickiness, but you can't do it without doing this. Once those feet are away, unscrew the screws and make sure they're put somewhere special so you know these four screws go on the bottom. Our next, we'll remove the covers on the back that cover the ACE Pro connection cables and the power and power switch. You'll just remove the screws and place them aside, again, in their own location so you know where these screws go. Do not put the screws back in their housing. That's something I usually try to do because there's not a lot of clearance to get this out later. On the inside, we're gonna start by removing where the feed tubes are. There's two screws on each side. And once you've removed those two screws, use a pry tool to help you get it out. It seems to be clipped in the front and you just need a little help to get it out of there. This is also an excellent time to inspect this tiny PTFE tubes on the bottom of this within the orange plastic. Next, we need to remove the actual inside. This was a pain in the butt and it's gonna take you a while. You need to pull back the outer shell while pulling up the inner piece of the Ace Pro. This did take me a while and I cut out a lot of time doing this. But eventually, you will be able to get it out and we'll be able to continue to look on the underside. You'll want to inspect the PTFE tubes, look for any disconnected wires, maybe accumulated dust, uh, check the fans, and blow everything out. If anything looks slightly worn, now's a good time to replace it. Double check those PTFE tubes. In the front, you can remove two black covers that have light sensing diodes in there that tell the ACE whether you've inserted a any filament or not. So instead of removing them, which looks like a pain, we're gonna blow them out and make sure it's relatively clean. I haven't had any issues with this, so I don't have a reason to actually disassemble it, but a quick blowing it out is recommended. Last thing we're gonna do is lubricate the rollers. For the first roller, I used the metal pry tool in the iFixit kit. Honestly, use the blue pry tools. It worked a lot better on the other rollers. When you remove it, there are bearings on each side. These are not connected really in any way, uh, so they can fall off. I'm gonna hold it on each end and only lubricate them when I'm pointing them up. If you do lose one, hopefully you're holding it over the ace, just like I am, so it doesn't go far. Once it's lubricated, press fit back in and continue to do all eight. While the design is slightly different between front and back, they do all have bearings, a rod, and a roller. 